till we get into our big stories. And of course, the very first one we're contemplating, mm. presidential aspirant Bernard Mona mm. has been disqualified. He's one of those who did not make uh, the cut, about 11 of them. And uh, he is obviously disgruntled. He's taken the matter to court, seeking certain reliefs. And I remember reading a story in respect of this where he says the EC never learns. But the question is, did he also do the right thing in terms of preparing his documents and all of that? All of those have come into sharp focus. We've seen uh, that rip that he's taking yeah. uh, to the courts, seeking certain uh, reliefs. Only time will tell whether or not he gets to make it on the ballot, because then if he does, how will that even change the numbering system, right? I'm just curious. I mean, he, he would probably have to be slotted because that would likely affect the independent presidential yep. uh, candidates mm -hmm. because as for the party ones, it's done. Mm -hmm. But they will probably have to slot him maybe at the bottom of the party at once before the independent candidates uh, follow. That would be a tricky affair, but we'll leave it to the courts to do their I own will. business. But shortly we'll be hearing from the man himself, Bernard Mona, on... I, I don't know what your take is... Okay, so I wonder mm. if really he's asking among many things to be reinstated. Right. And I wonder if that can actually see the day, the light of day. That that is the That's question. That's a big one. So that is the I question. Want, let's hear from him and see what He's on uh, phone. Would you like to kickstart the conversation? Ah, hello Bernard Mona. Good morning and thank you for joining us for breakfast. It now is we've good seen that you are talking to me. The other man's voice is so horrible. <laughs> Ignore that, our but, viewers. Uh, <laughs> they're friends. They know what they're doing. But, Bernard, we've seen your rates. We understand your concerns. <laughs> but just to set the conversation into motion, what is your concern with the Electoral Commission's disqualification of your presidential bid? First and foremost, there was no grounds for the Electoral Commission to, to disqualify me. The Constitution of Ghana, as you know, provides that to qualify to contest for presidential elections, you must be uh, 40 years last. You must be um, of sound mind. That one I have not gone to check. But it says that I should be a registered voter and I should be a citizen of Ghana. Those you are not in doubt of that I'm a citizen of Ghana and I'm a registered voter and that I'm 40 years and above. Mm. At the Trump Commission, that we fit regulations to support the Constitution. And in those streets, they said that to come to the nominate from 100 I have done. Uh, you're breaking up, Bernard. But I mean, just to give, put some things in context, the EC says your disqualification was based on your failure to correct some errors on your nomination form. Were you just speaking true. about that? Mm. It's not true. I corrected any and every error the Electoral Commission stated. And you can go to pages 9, 10, 37, 39, 42, 46, and 50. Those were the pages that the Electoral Commission identified as having incomplete particulars of my supporters. And the incomplete particulars of my supporters included that on one set of forms, we inadvertently omitted the date. On another set of forms, you omitted a telephone number. On another set, you were copying the telephone number and some transposition took place. <clears throat> you wanted to write 57 and you wrote 75. So we corrected those um, um, incomplete details and returned them to the Electoral Commission on the time that they scheduled for me. So as far as we are concerned, errors Electoral Commission identified, we corrected them. So except the Electoral Commission is saying that they took some errors, they were hiding them and deliberately decided that they will come and use those that they never drew our attention to, to be the basis upon which they will disqualify us. Uh, that, that, that is but, interesting but, because... But, 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 but hmm. if that were the case, or if the Electoral Commission did not identify some errors before they alerted us to correct our errors, how is their inadequacy going to be my liability? So from where you said it wasn't your your problem it was the electoral commission's problem because i will go back to what they i'll go back to what they said uh, they have stated that your particulars of supporters were incomplete 
you use registered voters in a particular district to support your nomination in other districts. In other words, duplication. Your form contained varying signatures of some supporters and in some cases, the same signatures for different uh, supporters. Th those are the grounds. And you're saying it was not your fault. It was the Electoral Commission's fault? Um, with particulars, I'm just, I just alluded to a letter the Electoral Commission wrote to me. And need I repeat that for you to see? Please go ahead. I just want you to reiterate because I no, want clarity no, on the this matter. This is what the Electoral Commission sent to me on the 13th. Mm. And uh, then I know that you are a very avid uh, person. It says, dated 13th September 2024, addressed to Bernard Ambassador Elamona, People's National Convention, Accra. Presidential nominations, 13th committee's report. I bring you greetings from the presidential nominations committee and trust that this letter finds you well. The nomination committee has detected the underlisted anomaly. The underlisted anomaly uh -huh. with your forms one incomplete particulars uh -huh. supported pages nine, ten, thirty seven. 39, 42, 46, 50. There was no key. Meanwhile, the commission is contacting your supporters to verify the authenticity of their consent to your nomination. You are required to come for your nomination form from to today, Friday, 13 September 2024, and effect the needed corrections and resubmit by 2 p.m. on Saturday. 14th September. Uh -huh. So we picked up this one. We did the correction and we returned them. So what are you talking about? How did you correct so the signatures? The how, how, did you, how did you correct the signature parts? The duplication signature? of signatures? They never told us of any signature. I see. They never told us of any signature. You, number you, two. Mm. Number two, take note. If it is not for the fact that you are grossly incompetent, when you come and tell me that incomplete particulars of my supporters, I did a little bit of accounting. And I was an accounts officer at Internal Revenue Service. I know when you talk about errors, the errors also have names. It is the kind of error that will give you the kind of solution. Not so. So right. if it is an error of omission, you simply go and bring back. If it's an error of permission, then you know what to do. If it's a transpositional error, you know what solution to. When you don't particularize the error, I'm a wizard to know that this is the error you want me to correct. Right. So for you, like you said, you're saying the liability lies on the end of the Electoral Commission. You just called them grossly incompetent. Uh, and you had an opportunity to remedy some of the errors. And from what you're saying... And I remedied them. And you remedied them, I per remedied what you're saying. But then the suggestion is that there were some other errors they alluded to or that have been alluded to that you were not privy to, right? I don't know about that. Okay. So I don't it, know about that, but take note. I'm hmm. saying that if the Electoral Commission is talking about errors, on page 139 of the nomination form that they gave to me to complete, Mm. The letter of permission wanted to find out whether I'm a male or a female. They wrote six instead of sex. Okay. Is it an error? Hmm. I, Is I, it an error? Are they disqualified? I, I get the point you're making, but they are the... It, it, someone the form, would say a six they were, is... They were alphabeting. They were alphabeting the form. Mm. And they started A, B, C, D. Mm. Instead of going to E, they went to F. Is it an error? Right. So and how so, can you use frivolity to disqualify somebody mm. who have traveled the length and breadth of this country, 275 constituencies, contested and been projected by his party? You don't use trivialities to become the norm. 
But Bernard, hold for me. So, sweetie, you, it's interesting the point he makes. He says, if you're going to come to ed equity, come with clean hands. And if you want to judge me on minutiae, little bits, little bits in there, then let me do the same with you, where you had an alphabet system, maybe A, B, C, D, and the rest. You jumped an E, went to an F. If someone needed an E there, what would the person do? Uh, S-I-X instead of S-E-X for the gender and yeah. all that. I don't know what your reflections are, because now he is also seeking relief from the courts. I'm curious to know, Bernard. I mean, at this point, it's just 70-something days to the elections. What do you really hope to achieve at this point, suing the Electoral Commission? Do you think that they will be able to reinstate you in time enough for the December 7th polls? You, you should, your memory should not fade you this morning. Don't forget that in a district alarm, assembly elections involving marking, the Electoral Commission had gone to everything, procure all its material. One candidate challenged the Electoral Commission for not including him. The whole processes were aborted by the court, and the Electoral Commission started afresh. It is not me. Electoral Commission knows that when you unjustly disqualify people, they will seek remedy. So before we can seek remedy, you rush. It so how am I going to be the one you are asking this question? Because you're I the one, you're the one suing them because you say I they've disqualified you unjustly. And the mm. to of Ghana, they did that. They put to attend the outside the Bernard, I lost that bit because your line was breaking up. But from everything that you've said, and Benjamin, it sounds as if, um, you know, what we say in our local parlance, do me, I do you, you know? Mm. So is it really, are you trying to get the right thing be done or are you taking up the EC I want on to, because... I am the presidential candidate of my party. I am the people's president. I know that the people of Ghana will choose me away from the MPP and the NDC. And you want to deny the people their chance of a president. Number two, listen, my candidature compels some other individuals who never thought that they want to contest for any election to go and pick up nominations from to contest on the ticket of the PN. Today, they are calling me to find out that why, now that the Electoral Commission is disqualifying you, does that mean that we are virtually like independent candidates? All right. So the thing is not like impacting on me alone. It is a whole lot. It's not Bernard Bonner. It's a whole political institution. This is not an independent candidate. But, but, Bernard, I, I just want to find out what reliefs specifically, yes, we've seen, uh, you know, the court documents. What reliefs specific, uh, specifically are you there seeking are seven, from the court? Predominantly is that the Electoral Commission had in disqualifying me Mm. So they should put me back on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Number two, that they should cease from any further um, activities concerning election 2020. So you want so you I'm want included. a halt you want a halt to the process, right? Precisely. Until you are reinstated. Until I am included. Okay, right. right. You could put it that way. Until you are included. Mm. I, th so, those are the, those are the chief reliefs, right? Those are the major reliefs. Mm. Any other thing is. Uh, it's a, it's a side attraction. If, if that were to happen, what, what kind of relationship would you have with the Electoral Commission going forward? Because I read that article of yours where, you know, you had stated that the EC uh, never learned, that they don't learn from past mistakes. Uh, if that were to go forward as an arbiter, the Electoral Commission, and as you, uh, a likely contender, because now the court has not given a ruling on it, though we know in the past, there have been similar situations and people have been reinstated or people have been added uh, to the number. What kind of relationship do you think that will portend between you and your party and the Electoral Commission? Oh, we are a human institution. People are fallible. And mm. so if the court determines that the Electoral Commission act, we will take it like that and we will work with them. I have known Jean Mensa since 2003. Mm. And so for 21 years, I think that we have subsisted. I have known Dr. Bostman when he was at the university teaching, and he taught some of my colleagues at the university. Um, I have known Samit Ite for a considerable period. And so I will take it in my stride. I am a leader, and being a leader, I must know that not everything will go smoothly.
And so for me, all that I seek is that let me be reinstated on the ballot. I hold no grudge a grudge against anybody. Once the right thing is done and we are reinstated, I can assure you that I'll step when my rights are being trampled upon, I will not have any ap uh, apprehensions against anybody and the institution, the Electoral Commission. Let me also look uh, with you finally on the other side. What if things don't go your way in court and the stance adopted by the Electoral Commission oh, is... No, 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 no hold, hold for me, hold for me, is reinforced. What then happens to your bid? Like you said, you've spent a lot of, you've expended a lot of resources, time, going to all the constituencies, likely all the districts in our country. What then does this bode for Bernard Mona and the PNC? Well, the PNC will not die, as you are aware. Um, the PNC has survived after Dr. Hila Lehman. It has survived after Dr. Mahama. It has survived after Hassan Ayarga. It has survived again after Dr. Mahama, and it's surviving after David Afasara. Even after me, the PNC will survive. All that I want to say is that the political party that has earned its place in the history of our nation in the Fourth Republic cannot be treated with the kind of frivolities that the Electoral Commission wants to subject it. I see. Ben and I so... I'm just curious to find out, are you the only one with this um, concern, this particular issue? I know you're fighting well, for your cause, but are you the only one who has an issue like this? I, I will be surprised that the TPP has now filed their case in court. I will be surprised that three independent candidates who visited me over the weekend at my office mm -hmm. and shared similar, similar um, positions will not go to court because it turned out that the Electoral Commission was not only incompetent, but they were also lazy because the same letter that they gave me is the same letter they gave to the other person. Candidate. Wait, wait, when you what say, when you, came, but, but I want to please clarify for us quickly. When you say the same letter, do you mean the same wording in each letter for everybody? from the name of the candidate. The but, same but what if there were similar concerns running through all of them? In fact, let me do this. Let me conduct this exercise. Let's look at the disqualified uh, aspirants. Samuel Apia Dankwa, uh, he's an independent aspirant. He had a number yeah, of issues. He came to no, my office. Right. So, so let me just walk through. And then through. the letter he had, mm. if you want to, me to read, I'll read. Okay, go this ahead. Is his letter. If you want me to read his letter, I'll read it for you. But, but is it verbatim, the same thing, yours I'm and his? That. Listen to the letter they wrote to me on the 20th, and listen to the letter they wrote, the same content. Okay. Finding nomination, disqualification mm. from the 2024 presidential election. Mm. I bring you greetings from the Electoral Commission and trust that this letter finds you well. On behalf of the Commission, I regret to inform you that following the review of your nomination form by the technical and IT team established for this purpose, you unfortunately failed to qualify to contest as a presidential candidate in the 2024 presidential election. The team then took several errors and committed your fault, even though we were provided with an opportunity to correct it. We wish better luck next time. Thank you. Yours faithfully, Mrs. Jean Mensa. Okay, but Bernard, Bernard, move, reposition yourself briefly before you go to the next letter. Your, your connection is a bit uh, patchy. Just reposition yourself a little bit. I don't know whether you can... But I'm not driving. Mm. All right, all right, let's, let's go ahead now. I can hear you a bit better. So, so clearly, this is my letter. Should I read up here down, uh, Samuel, up here down? I mean, if, if, if you say it's the same thing, I don't, I don't think you need to go so over it. So it is the same thing. The only thing is that the addressee are different. And if you ask Nana Stevens, who was also in my office over the weekend, it's the same thing, except the addresses are different. Okay, so, you so, ask Amo Dako, right. it's the same thing. Let, let me, let, I'm curious, because if you look at Samuel Apia Dankwa, it says uh, he had a number of issues. No tax certificate for vice presidential candidate, incomplete forms for supporters, and uh, he was provided an opportunity 
to rectify, that but he was... The verbal, he, and, that is the verbal one that he meant that day. Okay. That is not contained in the letter that was sent to him. Right, but he was unable to do so. I'm just, I'm just saying that out of curiosity, if you look at the differences in, uh, you know, what was stated by the electoral commissioner, I, I'm just a bit curious about how the letters could have been the same. But I'm not, privy to, I'm not privy to all of these letters, so... I'm uh, call, call we, we, we can Nana give you the benefit call, call of, Amoda, of the who, DAO. Call uh, my, my brother Nana Okuri Usu of PPP. Mm. And you see that the letter, the content is the same. All right. So we have Janet Nabla as well, uh, without vice, a uh, vice presidential candidate uh, signing the forms. Uh, and on the basis of that, among a few others, disqualification there, Desmond Abrefa. Um, he used details of voters in a particular district to support the nomination in other districts, as was mentioned from some others. Uh, there was also Nane Japong Stevens, uh, who used details of voters in a particular district to support from other districts. And then yours, which I've mentioned, Paul Perko, James Kwesi Opong, uh, James, for example... Uh, Bro, the, the comment was that are, his statutory declaration was not notarized. Electoral formation. No, I get your point, Bernard. I'm not, I'm not contesting your point, Bernard Mona. different from what they, they said. Bernard Mona, I am not contesting your point on the fine print you, you may have got and the other contestants got. I am merely reiterating what later was said about why they were disqualified. I am not contesting what you are saying. Uh, I don't have access to these all these letters, by the way, to even contest it. Uh, Samuel Sampo Ankara, it goes on, Niamudako, Kofi Asamoah Sian of the PPP, you mentioned, and then John Kweku, uh, Kwipi as well. Uh, uh, an interesting question, though, sweetie, I don't know what you think, and I'll run it by Bernard Mona. Uh, there are always, at least for how many elections that I remember, there are disqualifications. Um, and then sometimes these matters go to court. Do you think that's, that's uh, a negative reflection on our elections? In other words, uh, is enough done to ensure that people know exactly what must be done and are aided to do so by the Electoral Commission? Or do you feel some section is, is what, what would be the right word to use? I don't want to use denigrated, but is placed on the borderline so that they always suffer some disqualification. Do you think the processes are apt, Bernard Mona? Well, I, the British High Commission visited me just on the day of my filing of the nomination. Mm. And I told them, just as I told the Electoral Commission when I submitted the form, I said, you are still engaged in some on, on some colloquial way of doing things. Why was it going around 200 and uh, 51 and get nominated, filling them in particular? What is the election? What is the What is What is it? What is What is it? Fill them in particular. What are these? It's of no significance. It was a way to check whether candidates were national in character or not. Today, it matters. Social media, the other way, affects national in character. Okay? Those days, I have to sit in my office for you to be able to call me. Bernard, we're struggling with your connection. We are losing a lot of what you're saying. We'll try to reconnect uh, with you. But for those who have been apprehended, I'm talking about Democracy Hub and some of those who were, Suti Abochi, as you recall, yesterday went through the court processes, some of them in police remand, others in prison remand. There's a, there's a difference. And then you would have some people from Fix the Country posting on social media that the likes of Niai, for example, um, you know, of the group has been taken to the Insawam prisons and all of that. He's on prison remand. Let's have an interaction with uh, a lawyer for some of these um, accused, lawyer Nelson Amedewonu. He joins the conversation. Uh, Nelson, a very good morning. Good morning. 
Thank you for joining the conversation. I just, for starters, you, before, before my colleague Sweetie comes in, I just want you to lay the foundation for us. Walk us through uh, the court processes that have taken place so far. Are, are you representing all the 42 and, um, is it 31, rather? And 31. 31, yeah. right. And, yeah, right. And what is the status of these groups uh, from yesterday, following from yesterday's court proceedings. Okay, so the status is uh, yesterday. What literally happened was that the the pleas were the pleas of twenty one were, were taken, and they all pleaded not guilty. But eleven of them, we asked the court that they is to be adjourned to today, today for the for the their plea to be taken before. The charge they were not informed of the charge, charges, and the charge was only given to them in the courtroom. And we could not have conference with them in the court, courtroom to advise them as of their legal rights and the consequences of the appeal. So we asked that the case be adjourned today, but that the adjournment was given, but only that it were, it was, we were surprised about the date. It was 8th of October for the 11 people. To also be, for their police to also be taken. So, so far, some of them, their police have been taken and they pleaded not guilty. And indeed, they are not guilty. They are very much innocent. You, you said so you were surprised was, by that, the date. Right um, Mr. Nelson, hold for me. You said you were surprised. What's the element of surprise there? Just for clarity. The element of surprise is that the, we were asking for a day, a day adjournment so we can properly advise our clients for their police to be taken. So we were taken aback when the case was adjourned for two weeks for those for the eleven people for them uh, for the court to take their plea. And what's what's your explanation to that, or what do you think is happening there that you know surprised you? And how do you intend to move forward? We are going to appeal, and especially there is a, a pregnant woman among them, and the, the pregnant woman we are going to make sure that we get the necessary documents. And proof to the fact that uh, she is pregnant, and I heard that the uh, situation is dire, so we have to make sure that we get uh, the police files to be to get a relief on time, so that we don't have any. Are, are you saying? Are you suggesting yes. that this woman is pregnant, and as of now, it's yes. still not been confirmed, or the police, with its systems, because the police has hospitals as well, has not been able to confirm. Her, her status as a pregnant woman, and so she's still being held in custody? Yes. It, from the whole thing, you can see that the police are not even interested in taking the, uh, in, 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 in having conference with the people in order for them to even properly take their, uh, uh, to properly take their statement. So, they should do anything just to please the powers that be. So we are going to make sure that this, uh, this lady is get out on time. Wow, All this, these is, this, 31, is, this is interesting, right? Yeah. Because a pregnant woman would necessarily require some medical interventions every uh, now exactly, and now exactly and then. Exactly the point. That is how come we are going to file the process today, to make sure that by the close of today, we file the nurses to get their relief. That, because it's... See, the... the, the, the you cannot, you, you cannot, which has done nothing. Even the mother has done nothing. So you can't punish the, the, the you, you, you can't. It's, 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 just, it's, it's just totally uncalled for. And we are, we are going to file the negative processes. By the goals of today, we hear from us. We make sure that we file the negative processes. Sweetie, there was some uncertainty about the children as well. Some say, you know, this has happened. Others say, uh, that has happened. One was taken in. I, I don't know. Yesterday, I, I've, I've, I've been very curious story, about them. Or was it news night that both of them have been returned to their grandmother? So, mm. as yes, you speak, both some, children some, have been returned to their grandmother. It may interest you to know that some of them are even made, driver's made. And some people are just bystanders. Oh, so you mean they were wrongfully detained? They were not even detained. protesters. Now, mm -hmm. now, some of them, you can see them that they said that they, they are wearing it from church. Some of them are, were holding the Bible, that is, the Bible. 
So I, I'm and, and, I, I want clarity on this, on the difference between the police custody and the prison custody. What accounted for the differences in where the other parties are held and, you know, in police custody and prison custody? What explanation do you have? Yeah, the, police, the, the, the prosecution was requesting request, from the court that they, uh, some of them be remanded into prison custody because they don't have the necessary infrastructure to hold all the accused persons. Oh, so it's about inadequate infrastructure to exactly. hold all 39 um, arrested protesters. Exactly. Okay, go on. Yes, yeah, so they, they were requesting that they don't have the infrastructure. So they want them to be kept in prison custody for the next two years. And I'm sure they are just going to take them on the tour of the prisons, the, 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 the various prisons we have. This is the information we are having us at now. Benjamin, do you suspect do you suspect that this is actually the case or is it that maybe some who are seen to be too boisterous are being shown something small as we we put it here you are lawyer what do you think some some who are seen to be too boisterous they are the ones that they are they are, they are taking on the prison so so so, so you know, suspect account for some of them you suspect that this is not about space for inmates at the police uh whether you you would say no 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 no, no. it's not about holding space. areas it's it not, is about showing some about people space. power yes just to show them where power lies i see that's that's yes. an interesting thought at the end of all of this you are a lawyer you know that you mentioned that driver's mates or conductors were yes. bundled in if exactly. the courts rule that these people were not liable then we could be looking at some form of maybe even malicious prosecution? Because the AG exactly. is on this, right? Yes. Mm. We are going to make sure that we get the necessary compensation for them at the end of the day, if the court finds them not to be liable. So the plan is that if the court finds some of these people not liable, the next step yes. would be take, to, to take the state on for malicious prosecution and likely exactly. get damages and from, for, for, and for from the, the people affected. the evidence we have so far, the 31 people that I represent, all of them are not, all of them are very much innocent. What do you from think, though? That we have, we have guarded. Mm. Let's look at the other side. Yeah. What do you think, though, about those who vandalized certain, I mean, party paraphernalia, billboards, among others? Uh, what do you think of that? Is that legal? Is that lawful? It's not lawful, but who is the complainant? Right. Who is the but, complainant? But, but when you look at the when you, no lawyer, when you, when you look at the billboards, you know, because yes. of their positioning and all of that, you are fully yes. aware that at some point you do yes. these things and it is seen, viewed to be public, you know. Uh, property. Yes, and, but and, what we are saying, what I'm saying is that the 31 people that I represent are very much innocent of all these accusations. Are you saying From this the, because you represent them they, or you can actually it, prove that they are innocent? We can actually prove that at the end of the day. Well, so how about letting the court decide whether or not they are innocent? I mean, it's no, one thing to... Can we, need the, we first need them to be on bail. Okay. Yes. If I need them to be on bail before we can be, we can be able to prove that they are very much innocent. So as things stand now, uh, lawyer Medon, what yes. is the next step for you? The next step is we are going to appeal, and also we are going to, we will go back to the same court on the issue of the pregnant lady. By the way, we are going to appeal their matter, their, their, their bail condition. Well, uh, we're grateful for your time and we wish you the very best on that enterprise. Thank We've you. also Thank heard, you. for example, yesterday, uh, some yeah. people posting on social media, someone I know, Felicity Nelson, yeah. uh, together with yeah. some others, then I heard of Niai, and I hear yeah. some of them don't have access. I don't know, maybe lawyer, you can just clarify for us before I we was, go. I, I was at the station myself on Monday. Right. Yes, I was on the, uh, the station myself on Monday. And it's like everybody was try, just trying to be busy. You ask just trying to what? There, no one wants to take responsibility and to actually tell you, oh, we are giving them bills. Uh, this is where they, they are being kept. No, no one wants to take responsibility.
So we were given that out. It was at the railway police station. Railway police station, we went there. They, they know nothing about him, where about. So as and now, Felicity Nelson, we can't account for where she is right now. You can't account for Felicity Nelson. And we've exactly. also heard stories about, on social media, as people have posted, members of the group, that yeah. they are not being given food or water. I'm not saying it is true. That's why I'm asking you. It is you. very much true. They are not giving food or water. It is very much true. Well, You're suggesting they are being starved? Yes, that is the thing. They are being starved. Wow. They, yes, they don't even allow their family members to get access to them. Even as of now, myself, I don't know the situation that they, they are being kept. So if I want to have any conference with anyone as of now, I have to call, make calls and fall on connections to make sure that I get all uh, the whereabouts of these people. Which is not fair. So even me, I'm not having access to them. How much more they are family members or people who are ready to give them food? Lawyer Nelson Amedewonu, we're grateful uh, for your time. Thank you so much uh, for joining the conversation. Before we get back to, before we get back to Bernard Mona, uh, so much for human rights, right? Mm. So I am saying, don't flout the law. You know, I, was, I always want to look at both sides. You can't go destroying public billboards public. and all of that. It's, it's a public item now. It, you don't need a Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to come and petition before. So those ones, I feel they were on the other side. But you see the way we are treating these people. The lawyer is suggesting they are even being starved and all of that. If we were this serious with especially politicians involved in Galamsey and the Galamsey elements, don't you think we would have got far? Look how serious we are with these young people. And I'm not saying that I support some of their actions. But I'm saying we are so vehement with this and even suggesting that, oh, prison cells, uh, police cells, and so we have to take some of them to in Sawam and other places. If we were this serious about fighting Galamsey and fighting the known political actors in Galamsey, I think we would have won by now. But I guess it is what it is. We have Bernard Mona back. Yes, we want to wrap up with Bernard. Bernard, so as we speak, what are your next steps of action? Bernard, if you can hear me, you have to unmute. I don't know if, I think, we, if I think we we've lost, lost Bernard, but we've he, lost he, uh, Bernard he, Mona. Um, I think I can infer from the conversation we had earlier that he says that he's going to um, pursue this until the right thing is done. He wants the processes to be halted until he's included and reinstated, and then we can see how that. Um, Unravels. But this is the end of this built of conversation. And